All right. Well, hello again, all the boys and girls out there in YouTube land watching. John Nell of Georgia Beer Views back at you today with a special live examination of Harpoon Duncan Coffee Porter. This is a 2018 limited release, 6% alcohol by volume, 28 IBUs. And joining me this evening is Ron Alterio of Louisiana Beer Views. Thanks for joining me, Ron. Hello, John, and, and thanks for inviting me and coming up with this idea. I'm sorry Michael Komarov can't join us. Hopefully, or perhaps other people will join. We're both kind of tired. You, because you actually worked all day. Me, because I didn't really work today <laughs> but <laughs> at all. But um, I do crazy things like wake up at 2.47 on my day off. <laughs> right. And why? I'd be tired, too, if I got up that early. <laughs> and why? Oh, I'm going to get up early so I can check all the ba basketball scores <laughs> and read all the basketball game stories that I want to read and then do a Dawn Busters at 5.30 a.m. Okay, so. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to do them. Somebody's got to do them, and it's got to be me, I guess. All right. All right, so you have had, we both had this beer, and done solo reviews on our channels. Um, uh, yes. My friend David said he never had it. So I said, well, uh, I'll bring it out there when I go to his apartment the next time. All right. We've got Gabriel Salaya watching. Hey, Gabriel. And hey. emergency vehicles, trains, aircrafts, et cetera, is watching, says, hey, how is everyone? Doing good? Just uh, about to enjoy a harpoon coffee or yeah coffee porter duncan coffee porter holy smackerel this bottom the bottom of this bottle is caked with stuff well i didn't expect that but that's it's time for a swishing for i do believe oh yeah mine's i there's a bunch of stuff on the bottom it almost looks like um like nesquik powder or something you know like that's yeah. left at the bottom of the glass yeah it's coming loose though All right. Ooh, all right. Well, look at this thick head on this. This thing looks like a doggone milkshake. Sure does. Nice dark brown appearance. Creamy looking beige head. I have some notes. Let me see if I can find them. I do too many beer reviews. Oh, here we go. Harpoon Duncan Porter, coffee porter, 6% alcohol, 28 IBUs, introduced this year, 2018. Beer, beer Advocate said it was very good. Great beer, of course, hated it, because <laughs> I hate everything. Untapped, uh, thought it was so, so. I, I, can, I can't really figure out untapped. They think everything is average. Um, but they didn't give any ingredients. That's what I was looking for. Like, what kind of malts? What kind of hops? They don't say. Right. All we really know is that it's brewed with Dunkin' Donuts coffee. <laughs> yeah, which my experience is pleasant as it regards that stuff. Right. So it's a pleasant aroma. Uh, pretty malt forward, wouldn't you say? It certainly is. And there's a lot of coffee. It's, I guess, medium to dark roast. It's not full-on dark roast though right it smells pretty good the thing with uh, that I like about the aroma is you do get the coffee but it's not the only thing you get a lot right. of these coffee beers you know they kind of overdo it on the coffee and that's all you can pick up on you can pick up on the other notes as well the dark chocolate and the nice um, you know roasted barley malt so yes and when I visited you 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 remarked to me that you didn't partic you weren't really uh, into the coffee culture you didn't really drink coffee regularly not regularly but i do enjoy coffee uh from time to time it's not a flavor thing it's just uh you know i i don't take the time to brew a cup of coffee in the morning yeah in in my case i'm more i am a coffee addict and i mm. i believe that because People will make fun of me and say, oh, you're an alcoholic because you drink all the time. I say, no, 
That's not true because if I don't drink, I don't feel sick. But if I don't drink coffee, I'll feel sick. Right. Like I feel ill. Okay. There's a lot of people that's that have caffeine addiction. You know, they um, they don't have their coffee or their uh, energy drink or whatever in the morning. They get physically ill. So yeah. you're not the only one. Okay. All right. Well, you ready to get into this beer? I sure am. Look at that lacing. All right. Look at that lacing. Cheers. Ooh. Cheers. Clink. <laughs> Black card is stopping in. Hey, Black card, she's in the uh, craft beer pours chat. Wow! All right, welcome. This coffee mm. porter is so rich. It's dark roasted, but not burnt malt. I said that I think in my solo video it wasn't burnt, and many of those dark porters are taste burnt in the Schwartz beers. Right. Yeah, this one's nicely balanced. It does have the uh, medium to dark roasted barley malt, but it's not, like you said, it's not to the point to where it, it has a burnt uh, taste to it. You do pick up some chocolate, or at least I do, and then, the, of course, the coffee's there. But like I said, it, with the aroma, it's not really overpowering. It's it's well balanced. You get a lot of the other flavors um, with this beer, which I really like, uh, because if they had gone too heavy on the coffee, this beer would wouldn't be half as good as it is. You're right. Now I would like to see some variants, but it'll never happen. See where I live, we have coffee and chicory. I don't know if that's common in Georgia, but I would like to see somebody do a coffee and chicory beer. Uh, maybe they could do like a a medium roast coffee and with beer and a dark roast coffee and beer. But I just I'm seeing a little. Little drab, little dribs and drabs here of coffee beers, but not a whole lot. Abadica, Arabica Dabra was good. I've never, never seen that one. You never saw the Arabica Dabra? Now, who, who makes that? I think it was, uh, it had like a magician on it. It's Arabica coffee. Right. With the, uh, I think it was Founders. Hmm. No, I've never heard of that one. So I've had the, um, I've had the Lagunitas coffee stout, and that was one that, although it was good, it was super bitter, super coffee forward, and you really weren't getting too many other qualities with it. So if you really didn't just absolutely love coffee, you wouldn't like that beer. With this one, the coffee's there. It's good, but it's nicely balanced. You get the caramel sweetness, the chocolate, the roasted barley malt. So you don't necessarily have to be super into coffee to like this beer. Right. You could be into, you could be super, let me say this correctly. You could be super into Burger King chocolate shakes and get into this beer. Yeah, exactly. Come to mention that I haven't had a good Burger King chocolate shake in so many years. That's not right. Um, <laughs> it's like, hey, what am I going to live forever? It's about time to get a Burger King chocolate shake, people. Um, you would like the uh, you'd like the Arby's Jamocha shake if you haven't had that because that one's got coffee and chocolate in it. Yeah, but too bad Arby's that was literally right there. I could see it from this window closed down years ago. I don't know what happened. That Arby's never did make it here. I thought it was all right. People said, what? Didn't you think it was horrible? I said, no, it tasted like Arby's. I don't know what y'all thought Arby's was, but um, that is gone. So we don't have it here. <laughs> we have it in New Orleans, but not in the suburbs, the far suburbs here. I'm not in the close suburbs either. Uh, well, I'm trying to think of what's the negative with this beer, but I'm having a hard time finding them, finding one. Right. Yeah. It's, it's pretty great all the way around. In my opinion, um, Craig Swenson's tuning in says he thought it was fine, but I do not really enjoy flavored beers. I consider coffee porters flavored. I do love Harpoon's classic IPA and their flannel Friday. 
Haven't yeah. had the flannel Friday, but the, the IPA is really good. The IPA is dynamite. And the flannel Friday was dynamite. Hey, Craig Swenson, thanks for watching. It is I a flavor. It is a flavored beer. I mean, let's be honest. It's flavored with coffee. I mean, what do you, you know, that's what it is. Right. Um, I think Samuel Adams should take a page out of Harpoon and Sierra Nevada's playbook and uh, and up their game with these seasonal and limited release beers. Whoa, watch it. Hey, um, Yeah, because, you know, I have said this since 2011. So if people want to claim that I'm just bringing this up now for some whatever personal grudge, it isn't so. I said this in 2011. I said, you ever notice? <laughs> you ever notice that Samuel Adams beers all taste the same? And I was saying that because I, if you ever look at their ingredients list, it's always two row pale malt blend. Halitol, middle fruit, hops. It's like a repetitive, it's like Taco Bell. They take seven ingredients and they just mix them around and they have 27 different things. Right. Like the same stuff, they just move it around. So uh, I don't know why people don't, well, I guess maybe people do realize it. I'm not slamming it, but it's kind of dull, <laughs> especially the Sam 76. Uh-oh. Sorry, I shouldn't oh, yeah. have that on your channel. No, it's true. I mean, if people have uh, watched my review of it, I actually gave it a 76 out of 100. That was the score I gave it. <laughs> that's that's uh, about right. A C. Right. It's like, well, you know where China is on a map, but you don't really know much about the map in your geography class. Um. We're not anti Samuel Adamsites. We're just talking, and, and we're not the only ones that say that. I mean, a lot of people say that it's kind of bland, right? And they make excellent beers. They have Barrel Room Collection line. They have the Utopia stuff, which I can't get, but that's that's more like liquor than beer. But they have a lot of really great offerings. Uh, but their their basic seasonal lineup, typically, uh, in my experience, is just kind of dull, like you said. Uh, the Harpoon and uh, Sierra Nevada seasonal variety packs are better. have been much more enjoyable. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Shiner also a little Shiner, mm -hmm. not greatly better, but better. And and Shiner tends to be a little bit cheaper, maybe than um, Sam Adams. But we, I mean, we talk about pennies on a dollar. But uh, a beta, okay, yeah, they're kind of dull too. I'll admit that. But uh, they're not quite as dull. And um, the Christmas ale this year was really dynamite. And other people told me it's terrible, it's horrible. I said, I don't see what you're talking about. But um, will I try future Samuel Adams seasonal beers? Well, yeah, but I I know what I'm gonna taste. <laughs> Right. This one here was really something else. I think it's above and beyond what you would think. What you would think. I mean, people slam. I've noticed this over the years that I, but I've been reviewing beer. People slam Harpoon a lot. They're like, oh, that ain't no good. I was like, it's not. I always liked it. I guess I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to like it. <laughs> right. Harpoon really wasn't very popular around here until maybe about two years ago. Um, so, and now I see Harpoon beers everywhere and we're getting all the variety stuff. So uh, they really have uh, done well in our area over the last couple of years. But before that, I didn't even know about them. So. Yeah. And it's flipped here because 10 years ago, it was uh, much more popular here than it is now. Same thing with Red Hook which is another brewery people constantly rip apart and talk about how terrible it is. And I, and I, and I'm always saying, Oh, okay. I always liked it, but I'm sorry. I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to, but yeah. uh, the mouthfeel on this is medium. It's not heavy, but it shouldn't be. It's a Porter. The finish is semi dry. It's not too sweet. It's not too dry. dry. It's like perfect. It's if you've, 
if you've had Dunkin' Donuts and Dunkin' Donuts coffee, this is kind of like what you've had, but with booze in it. <laughs> I mean, for real, right? Yeah. Um, and who hasn't had Dunkin' Donuts coffee and donuts? Right. If you're an American, uh, you've had Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> It's not that popular in the South Central states like Louisiana, but it's around at least. Uh, we have one here in this town. It, I always see people there. Uh, they have a distinctive flavor. I don't know. It's hard to pin down. It's hard to understand. I don't even understand it. Their donuts and their coffee have a distinct flavor, and I don't know what gives it that flavor. It's like you know you're eating a Dunkin' Donuts donut, and I don't know why that is. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Krispy Kreme and Dunkin' Donuts, their donuts are a lot different. Oh. Or at least in my experience. Yeah, Krispy Kreme made a big push down here. And it, initially it was very popular. But I think people started to realize, just like I did, that mainly their calling card was that they were real greasy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like there's only so much grease you could take. Where Dunkin' Donuts, had a much more refined product to me. Now, people say, oh, that's a bunch of processed food. Yeah, I know. It's just a more refined processed food. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> we, so, we, we realize what we're dealing with here, people. Right. It's like, uh, you know, people that go uh, and eat McDonald's, uh, a McDonald's burger wouldn't compare it to a five star restaurant, uh, you know dining experience but uh it gets the job done and it's it's good <laughs> right if we did if we did pot pie frozen pot pie reviews somebody would say don't you know that marie calendars is processed food well i mean yeah we knew that before we ever decided to do the the video series we're talking about the products within the context of what they are marie calendars swanson uh uh, what's the other one? Uh, banquet. I mean, we understand what we're dealing with here. It's not like we're unaware of the the low grade situation in which we right. are operating. <laughs> right. So, Turtle Man, the Irish man, is watching and asks what we're drinking. Uh, he's tuning in. We are drinking the Harpoon Duncan Coffee Porter. And we both like it. Um, I sure do. I love it. I give it a 95 out of 100, if if not higher. Yeah, I gave it a 96 um, on my initial review, and I'm sticking with that. It is excellent. Um, and the price point here was pretty cheap, I mean, or pretty reasonable for a six-pack. It was $9.99, but I did get a discount. I don't know what it's normally priced at. I want to say $12.99, but even for that price, uh, I think it's worth trying. It's only going to be around for a while, um, and it's an A beer, so you really can't go wrong with it. No, you can't, and I paid $1.79 plus tax for a single, which to me, in this day and age, is not a bad price. Right. You're going to pay a little bit more typically for the singles, but then at least you don't have to splurge for a six-pack or 12-pack, so uh, that's that's a good price for a you know, to get to try it. Yes, and my bearded friend, you know, you and I have beards, but he's got a real beard. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, old David, huh? Not these little playing around beards. He, like you and I have, he has like this massive exemplification of beardedness. But he, uh, he wanted to try it. He said, I never tried it. I said, I'm going to bring you one this weekend. So, he wants to do a duo review. I don't know how he's going to take it. He's kind of funny about stuff, but uh, he might like it. I don't know. We'll find out. That's what else you're going to do. You try it, right? But he, right. he wasn't interested in trying Tecate. He was saying to me this afternoon, uh, I don't want to try the same old stuff or whatever. He said, bring something new. I said, well, all right. But I said to myself, I got this big bottle of Tecate. And then that's when I talked to you about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then the confusion followed. 
confusing problem. So uh, um, I guess you and I are saying this is a big time winner, so you should run out there and buy it. Absolutely. Um, I would definitely recommend it. it. And like like I said earlier, I mean, it's a limited release. They might put it out again uh, in the future, but who knows? Um, a lot of hype around this beer, and I think it I think it lives up to the hype, um, even though some of the websites don't really think so, but who cares what they think? A lot of times they're just slamming the beers because they don't like the company. Um, it's all like, about what you, what you like. I like to read those websites because, and, and one thing about reading those websites, you can start to understand why the scores are funny like that. Because when you start reading the reviews, usually they're really well written and they'll make sense. And, and, and I'll say that, that's just what I was writing. That's what I was writing, you see. But you'll get these really out of the park scores. Like everybody else is saying 3.8, 3.9 out of 5, 3.7. Out of, then you'll have this one person puts like a 0.01 out of 5. <laughs> and you'll get a few of them, and they always do that. They have target certain beer companies. So it just always throws the score way down. And yeah. I say, oh, these are the kind of people that they'll do the same thing on video reviews. They'll go around and they'll they'll just like go around and and target people. So I think it's best for people to read the written reviews. Like say the, the reviews from the last 30 days, the last month. Read read what people are writing, and you'll find that generally it'll make a lot more sense than the total score, which can be thrown off by those super low scores right all right well let's read let's see a few more comments here um zion is watching she says hello everyone good morning good morning <laughs> where are you from zion is it uh is it morning where you are um it is 7 30 here in georgia um the Irish man says, can't wait to find it when I get home. I think you'll really love it. Um, oh, yeah. it's, it's a good beer. If you like coffee, you like chocolate, you like malt forward beers, you'll love this one. And Gabriel Salaya says, Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I only had it once in the shop and in the ground, in the something, ground morning blend coffee in the bag. Had it a couple times over this year. Okay. Well, if you like if you like the Dunkin' Donuts coffee, you would like this beer. Yeah, and I'm curious who makes Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I'm pretty sure the company Dunkin' Donuts doesn't have a huge coffee mill somewhere, uh, which is making me think that it might be coming from Folgers over there in New Orleans, um, because if you get on the Folgers, and they're a huge company. I mean, huge, huge. There are two. The two Folgers coffee mills are in New Orleans, both. And when uh, Lee Poznanski came out, I showed him, there, there it is, there it is. And we rolled down the window and he said, I can smell it. <laughs> and uh, they've got to make a ton of money doing contract coffee brewing, you would imagine. Uh, um, don't they actually, I think maybe it was you that was telling me the great value coffee line uh from walmart uh, is made at that plant i said i was under the assumption that it might be i really don't know uh because these companies are very reluctant to let you know what they're producing and you have to spend hours trying to find the uh product like the facility code with potted meat or canned meat it's a lot easier because all the canned meat has to have what they call a um an establishment code and then when you find the establishment code at the bottom of the can you can just find it easy and they say okay it's made in madison fort madison iowa coffee is not as strict because it's not like meat you know it's not going to spoil or too much too easily so um they're not as strict but when you see those two plants and i was showing lee poznanski this you say oh no there's no way all the coffee coming out of there is going just to Folgers brands. It's got to be going to Walmart. It's got to be going to Kroger, for instance. 
in Georgia or Win Dixie here, because it's just there's no way they could get they, that all the Folgers could suck up that capacity. It's, it's incredible. It goes 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. They're out there just endlessly. And it's like a huge coffee pot. I, I'm serious. It's like we drive by it. It's like this huge hundred foot tall coffee pot. <laughs> and it's like they're dumping grounds in it. I don't know what, the, I mean, it's just crazy. You have to see it. If you don't see it, if you haven't seen it by standing in front of it, you wouldn't understand the scale. Right. But when you see it, then you say, oh, wow. But anyway, uh, the beer obviously is coming from Massachusetts and uh, Vermont. Right. Or Rochester, New York. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim's bruises uh, in the chat says, cheers, everybody. Thanks for uh, stopping by, Tim. Hey, Tim, I, I watch your stuff, man. A lot. Yeah, I watch his channel. I, uh, I'm looking forward to some more of his live streams when he starts uh, doing those again. Um, oh, right. He does rant videos like I do sometimes. <laughs> right. Hey, who doesn't like a good rant video? I know I do. <laughs> I do. You feel better. Um, another thing, that we, we have to mention Maxwell House because they must have huge coffee mills somewhere. I haven't researched Maxwell House. They're like the other big company, and that's Kraft, Heinz Kraft, and it must be huge. I don't know where they're located, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Dixie Brewing, I just saw an alert from Dixie Brewing today. They're working on their brewery. They were showing photos of the, of the facility they're building over there in New Orleans East. I said, ooh. They're either going to make yeah, they're either going to make a lot of money or they're going to lose their you-know-what on that. <laughs> I hope they like them, uh, make a lot of money and start distributing out this way. I'd yeah. really like to try that black and voodoo. Oh, I should have brought you some of that. That's one, one of the best beers. And um, it's really owned by a woman, a lady. Personally, it's not like a corporation. It's owned by this lady who's about 68 years old. And she also owns two other companies. One is called the New Orleans Saints football team. And the other one is the New Orleans Pelicans basketball team. <laughs> wow. So uh, she might have a little leeway to lose a little money if it doesn't work out. But I turn on the television at night and they've got Dixie beer commercials on TV every night. So... Mm. It's really popular here, but this is a small, poor state. This ain't the Empire State of the South, you know what I mean? Right. All right. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap up this live examination. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and um, commenting. I really appreciate it. So um, Harpoon Brewery, uh, Harpoon Dunkin' Coffee Porter, great beer. Brewery, they make a lot of good stuff. Uh, I'm happy that I can get more of their beers now, and I look forward to trying uh, some more of their beers in the future. Uh, Ron, I'll let you have the final word, and then we'll we'll close it out. Well, I think you made a great choice to um, come up with this idea to review this uh, product. And um, if you would like, I can very quickly preview what's coming up in the within the next week. Yes, absolutely. I just got to go it's grab like it. New. I just have to grab it. Hold on. The next All one. Right. Hold on. Cheers to you as well, Tim. Folgers coffees are good, says Gabriel. Yes, Folgers does make good coffee. I agree. Hey. <laughs> yes. Coming, ah, to come. coming to you from Mexico since 1944 with their new silver and red label. They got rid of the gold trim. Tecate. And I visited Tecate, Mexico, but they weren't brewing beer there anymore. This is a 32-ounce bottle. I got it for 
$2.59. It used to be $1.99 for years, but the price went up. Whoa. It's still a pretty, pretty good deal. Yeah, I preferred one ninety nine, but <laughs> well, so, yeah. <laughs> my friend, my review partner David was saying no, he didn't want to review that one, but then you took up the mantle and said, "Oh yes," <laughs> and you're you you're able to get it, but not necessarily that that particular bottle design. No, I don't get the 32 ounce bottles. I get the uh, 12 ounce cans and the 12 packs. I get the 12 ounce bottles and the 24 ounce cans. Yes, we get those. And folks, no, I'm not going to keep talking. I'm not going to commandeer your channel. No, go ahead. I know you got a Dawn Busters coming up this weekend. So uh, what's what you got? Well, I did do a, a solo review, and that'll be published next week, of uh, Bellows Club Whiskey. And if you can find that, you might also have a meeting with the Pope. <laughs> How rare that is. That's uh, pretty cheap, too, isn't it? It was in my case. It was eight ninety nine for a, a liter. But that yeah. was a really, yeah, it's a very strange store. And I don't know what they're about, but I don't ask questions. I just go in there, buy my stuff, and get out. But um, but you'd be fascinated by it if you ever visited here. You'd, you'd go crazy. But um, that's one thing. Secondly, we folks, in the next month or two, we might have some Paul Masson, Marsala, and Madeira coming up. Because I did some, some street, some leg work, I mean to say. I did some leg work for John this afternoon. Yes, I will definitely see if I can find it. I just I just haven't noticed it before, but I mean it doesn't mean I can't get it. It's just um it's not next to the other uh Mar Marsalas and the port, you know, the, that section of the um of the wine department. It's I, I haven't noticed it. Yeah, and I gave you that 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 one liquor store close to you. Well, if you want to say close. Which I had never heard of, by the way. I'll have to see where Look that up. They have a Facebook page. Apparently, they, I saw photos of it. I looked it up, and they have photos. It's right there on that main uh, road in that town, Peachtree City. And uh, mm -hmm. they, the, the company, Constellation Brand, said it's the only place around you that has it. It's called, well, we don't need to get into all that because most people watching could care less. They don't have any access to it. But apparently, they have it. Well, they might have both, the Madeira and the Marsala. Uh, but I would advise calling them first because you know sometimes the the company that produces the wine is relying on their distributor, and if their distributors right. give them faulty info, mm -hmm. you know they might give exactly. it. There'd be nothing to call them. All right, that's it. I'm gonna stop blabbing. All right, we'll, we'll go ahead and close it out. Thanks everybody for watching. A few late uh, people turn uh, tuning in here. Jacob Downey. Uh, thanks for tuning in and 21090 Brewing. How you doing, man? Uh, I enjoy your channel and your beer views. Um, and cheers to you as well. So, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in to this Harpoon Dunkin' Coffee Porter examination. Uh, go check out Ronald Terrio of Louisiana Beer Reviews if you haven't already. And check out the Dunkin' Coffee Porter. We think it's a excellent beer. It gets two thumbs up and, um, let us know what you think. All right. So uh, that'll do it, guys. I don't have anything really left to cheers you with, but uh, cheers anyway, and we'll see you next time.